All right, Shalom, Shalom. Uh, this is Brother Kasha Kuala. And the Brother Zakaria. All right, we're from the GMS uh, Atlanta Church here in Georgia. First and foremost, giving all glory, honor, and praises unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rakapadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. And today we're going to jump in a lesson pretty much pertaining around um, letting your light shine, but we're going to jump into a. Uh, we're going to go through the scriptures in Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5. Salakia. Because you know, as we go about in our everyday lives, there's a, cer a certain something about us that people are attracted to. It's kind of like how you see at nighttime, there's a street light and a whole bunch of fucking bugs be just... Bzz, bzz, they just attracted to that light. That's how we are. Okay, we're gonna get a few precepts to expound on the point. We're gonna break words down so we can get the full edification of what the scriptures are actually trying to portray and how we are personally, you know, on our day-to-day -day lives and how you should be conducting yourselves. Because at the end of the day, what we're ambassadors, we're representatives of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is light, so why not shine? Uh, his light through us, man, because that's who he's using, okay, the prophets. So without further ado, we're going to jump into Isaiah chapter 60. Come, this is Isaiah chapter 60, starting at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and let the glory of the Lord rise upon thee. For behold, it says, it says oh. and let the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So lot, yeah, risen Khan. upon thee, Khan, Khan. Khan, That's right. So many what? It says the glory of the Lord is risen upon upon you, man, because it's saying thee. So we, when you when you read the, the the letters of Jeremiah and Isaiah, they're they're writing to somebody, okay. Especially when you read the book of Jeremiah, <clears throat> he's writing to the children of Israel who were in the captivity of Babylon uh, under the Babylonians. Isaiah is writing to somebody, okay. But he's saying, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Meaning what? The spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. The spirit is what makes you shine. When Moses came uh, down from the mount, his face was glowing. He was shining. That they, they couldn't even look at him, man. Because of the wisdom he received from Yahweh Bashem Yahushai through the spirit. Okay? He was used as a vessel. All right? Okay? So with that being said... I'm going to pull a quick precept, and I'm going to let you get it. Um, this is uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 14. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Murmurings goes into uh, what? Grudging, okay? Or talk or upbraiding, meaning talking behind someone's back. Verse 15 is the point. It says, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the Most High, without rebuke, meaning uncorrect, like can't be corrected. Okay, you've done no, you've done no wrong. All right, in the mist, when you read the word mist, M I D S T, mist. When you read that, that means in the middle of something. Okay, let's see if they have the word mist in the Greek. Before we move on, they do, and it's a uh, mesos. Okay, and it means middle. Okay, or amongst. That's a good word, amongst. When you're amongst something, okay? So it says, in the midst or in the middle or in amongst, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. That's going into the per particular Israelites. Two-third Israelites were around. They're perverse. They're backwards. They're crooked, meaning not straight, <laughs> all right? Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. In the world, if I'm not mistaken, that word world right here is cosmos. Which it is, cosmos, which is an apt or harmonious agreement or government. So in the midst of a crook, perverse nation, and it's had, had the world at the end, meaning it's a particular set of people, it's a particular nation. The word nation goes into ethnos, if I'm not mistaken. And here is um, Jania which means uh, father birth uh, nativity, 
which is a particular eth ethnicity, okay? All right? So the point of the matter it says, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Isaiah 6, uh, 61, you can reread it, bro. Come, arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, meaning the spirits on you. Therefore, you're shining, okay, amongst the people. But we're speaking on the, the heathen nations in the two-thirds. You're, you're shining, okay? So let that light shine. So go ahead and you can get Matthew chapter uh, 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 5 and 16. I'll pull it up for the occupancy on the screen. Come on, you go ahead, bro. Come on, this is Matthew 5 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men. Mm -hmm. It says, let your light so shine before men. Okay? So let's look up the word uh, shine. And it's lampo. It's probably where you get the word lamp from. Okay? It says to shine. In the, in the Strong's definition, it says a radiant brilliancy. Mm -hmm. That's heavy, man. You got to be brilliant. Among your people, man. Among the people. To beam. Okay? You ever had a beam in your eye, man? Like a little, not like a beam as like a boat, but like, or like an eye balloon. Mm -hmm. But like a beam, okay? In your eyes, it's bright and it makes you, you know, kind of like quench and uh, uh, um, kind of uh, hesitate or flinch. Okay? That's how your spirit has to be uh, exuberated, if that's a word, among the people. Go ahead, brother. Come on. And I'm going to says, that they may see your good works. That they may see your good works, because that's the only way your light's going to shine. That's the only way if you know you have the light. Doing mm -hmm. your the good works. Get a precept. Okay. precept is uh, Romans chapter 2 verse 6 alright it says who will render every man according to his deeds alright because it said right there that they may see your good works so that if you're shining they're seeing your good deeds through your how by shimmy I will shine okay go ahead brother and glorify your father which is in heaven. There you heaven. go. Glorify. Mm -hmm. You know, glorify the Father. That means you give all thanks. Let's get one more precept. And we can continue. If you want to expound on anything, brother, be my guest. Hmm. Can, I, right. can I bring out that example? Can can give, I, I'm going to bring this out. Can, can. I'm going to let you bring that out. Can. Okay? It says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of the Most High in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach concerning you. Okay? So it says right here, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Like it just said in 1 Thessalonians, give thanks in everything. Okay? To Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai. And glorifying him is giving thanks to him as well, man. Because you're pushing his name. You can be like, it's not me. It's Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai. Who gets the glory for me being like this? So go ahead, brother. Yeah, kind. You know, for example, um, at my job, I didn't see my, you know, my name on the work on the work board or whatever, and they put me in a meeting, and I sat down with a group of people, and you know, it was like kind of like a self evaluation, but it really wasn't. It was like ideas for the company or whatever, and this lady named Dominique, she put me on the spot, and she was like, Jamon. And everyone, you know, looked at me. And um, she was like, you're very meekful, humble, respectful. You're a good man. And that we need more people like you. And everybody was just looking. And then in my head, I'm thinking, well, it's not me, you know, that you see. Because, you know, I was once in the world. I wasn't like that, you know. But when I came into the truth and started calling on Yahweh Shimei al Shah through good works and good deeds, he's going by himself through who? His men. The whole four left. You know, I was thinking, hey, it's not me that you're seeing. It's bits and pieces of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, you know. And that's why, you know, we got to continue to be that light, you know. 
And then, and then afterwards, if people come to me like, hey, hey, thanks, man, you know. Mm-hmm. And one thing led to another, you know. Come. Kind of. So that's that's the light that shines, or that um, that comes off you that that the people can see because it says, "Let your light shine before men." Men is plural. Come. Kind of. Okay. All right. So let's go back to Isaiah chapter sixty. Read verse one and flow into verse two. Come. Kind of. This is Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Mm-hmm. For, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. That's right. It says, for behold. So, behold meaning, look at this, man. Okay? In fact, let's see if we can pull up that word behold just for edification purposes, if it has it. Uh... I don't think it has it. I think it just has darkness. Um, <clears throat> which is okay. Um, but behold meaning to like feast your eyes upon this. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. Come, come. So uh, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. All right? And gross darkness to people. Okay? Let's get a let's get a, a quick preset. Let's see. Wax. Cold. All right, this is uh, Matthew chapter 24 and 12. It says, and because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Okay, let's get the word cold. It goes in, that's the word uh, psycho. <laughs> Look at there, psycho. So let's see how Esau pronounces it. Strong's G, 5594. Sucho. Sucho. Man, that's psycho, man. Shit. All right. <laughs> it says to breathe, blow, cool by blowing, to be made or grow cool or cold. Metaphor, waning love. The word waning, when you go into the moon cycles, you got waning and waxing. When it's waxing, it means it's coming abundant or growing more. When it's waning... Is going through its waning stages, meaning you're going, you're coming closer to a new moon, meaning it's fully dark. But when it's waxing, you're going closer to a full moon, which is fully lit. Okay, the men of the Lord were waxing. This society is waning. Okay, so even going back to Isaiah 60 and one, it says, "For behold, so feast your eyes." All right, on this the darkness shall cover the earth. Okay. The darkness shall cover the earth. So the society that we're in is waning and becoming dark. It says, in gross darkness, the people. The people, okay? Meaning what? It's what the people are waning in their love, all right? In their affection, okay? In their carefulness. It's waning. People don't give a shit no more nowadays, mm-hmm. okay? This is what Isaiah is saying, all right? So go ahead, brother. I'm going to continue in verse 2. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. And we understand by verse 1, when the Lord is risen upon thee, meaning the Lord puts his spirit on you, what happens to you? You shine. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, brother. Come. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Just like how we opened up. I said we are ambassadors. We're representatives. Mm -hmm. Meaning we represent somebody who's not here at the moment. Okay? But because his spirit is with us, we shine. and And we are an example of him. Okay? All right? So it says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. So his spirit is going to rise upon you, man. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. You gonna be, people are gonna see something about you, like the brother mm-hmm. said. How they she was giving what she thought was compliments to you was actually compliments to you. How about Shemia was shy? Mm-hmm. Okay, because he the spirit was on the brother at the time, even if he was in a chill chill mood, man. The spirit is on you. You know what I'm saying? The spirit is on you, whether you were. Uh, uh, if you're a sincere man, whether you uh, uh, recognize it or not, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Say something? Yeah. Like another example. Last night, we went to a restaurant. Yeah, that's right. And um, out of nowhere, this lady started knocking on the window. Mm-hmm. We wasn't sure what she was saying, but 
she was, it had to do something about us. Mm-hmm. And we was just chilling. And um, this, this um, brother Rip, like, why is everyone looking at us? And, you know, me and the brother look, me, yeah, we looked at each other and we responded, it's the spirit, you know? Yep. Our spirits. It's our spirits. Because yeah. they, they recognize Israelites, even two thirds. I love the word inclination because it means a natural tendency to do something. Mm-hmm. They have an inclination of who we really are. Their spirits recognize us, but their flesh is too strong to realize who they're actually recognizing. Okay? When, when we step into a building, we turn heads. Well, you know, that's how Jake said, no, but when the men of the Lord step into a building, we turn spirits. Spirits are attracted to us. That's why people look at us and don't even understand why they're looking at us. Because we look like normal day Joe Schmoes. Yeah, we were just chilling, eating, you know, watching the game. But we have the spirit of the Lord, yeah. which the scriptures talk about how we're going to obtain fame. That's even, that fame is coming, is starting to come right now. People are going to start recognizing us through the spirit, you know, through the spirit. Okay, because what? The glory shall be seen upon us. Okay, so go ahead to verse three, brother. Come on, verse three. And the mm-hmm. Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. That's right. So the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the... Re, go ahead and reread that verse again. So like, come on. This verse three. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. This is, uh, let me see something. Okay, bet. Get, uh, Micah 4 and 1 real quick. Come on. Because we're going to link something together. It says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Just like I said, you see a, a street light outside, right? And the bugs are really attracted to it. We're that street light. And these people are attracted to it. So it says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy, to thy light, right? Mm-hmm. To, it says, thy light. Again, meaning Isaiah is speaking to someone like your light. They're going to come to you, bro. They're going to come to you because you've got something. Okay? So uh, read Michael 4 and 1. This is Michael 4 and 1. Mm-hmm. But in the last days, it shall come to pass. See, in the last days, when the last days is speaking to us, that day, that day of Jacob trouble, man. Okay, go ahead. That the mountain of the house of the Lord mm-hmm. shall be established. So this is this is the last days, but it says the mountain of the Lord shall be established. Mm-hmm. So this is towards the very last milliseconds of Jacob's trouble. Meaning what? Yahweh Shai gonna crack the sky and he's about to demolish these people in one hour. That's when the mountain's gonna be established. Okay, but we're still gonna be on the earth getting ready to get beamed up. Okay, so go ahead. Come in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills. It shall be exalted above the hills, meaning the other nations and the other governments. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And people shall flow unto it. And people shall flow unto it, meaning go into the mountain, the new mountain that is established, which is the kingdom of heaven. Because we understand that the kingdom of heaven, going back to uh, 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 the Lord's Prayer, I think in Matthew 5, where it says, as on, as on earth, as it is in heaven, okay? Meaning heaven's actually going to come down and establish itself on the planet earth here, okay? But people are going to flow into it because it's going to be a big generating light that people are going to have no choice but to go to for the want of all things. Because according to Deuteronomy 30 and 7, the curse is going to be put on them. Instead of us going to the white man for the one of all things, all the other nations are going to come to us for the one of all things. So they're going to come unto us because we have the light. And it says in in Isaiah 16 and 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. That's right. So this is Revelation chapter 21 and 20. I'll start at 24. Okay. I start at 24. And the nations, this is Revelation 21 to 24, and the nations of them which are saved 
shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Into what? All right. Into the kingdom of heaven. But even so, you can pertain this to what? To that day of trouble. Because the kingdom of heaven partially will be walking the earth that day. The kingdom of heaven is established in us. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, when you read uh, first um, Corinthians chapter three, I think verse 16, if I'm not mistaken, it says, do you not know that you are the temple of the most high and mm -hmm. that the most high dwell in you? Oh. So when you're around your Akim, you're getting a taste of the kingdom of heaven right there. So even in the, in the day of Jacob's trouble, when the men of the Lord are walking around and have that light, people are going to flow into that. Michael 4 and 1 is going to be happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Okay? But again, it says, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Okay? That's not talking about everybody. Okay? The any and every fucking body. Mm -hmm. No, man. That's why you, to understand Revelation 21, you got to understand Revelation 7 in the multitude. Because it's a many uh, nations and kindreds. Okay? You got to look into that word kindreds to fully understand and grasp the, the understanding of what it's speaking about, man. Because you understand that the children of Israel scattered abroad everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Come on. So the Gentiles, okay, that peace of the multitude at that time and during Jacob's trouble when they see your light is going to flock unto you, man. So continue reading Isaiah 16 and 3. Come on. Uh, verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light mm -hmm. and kings to the brightness of thy rising. That's right. Go ahead. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. <laughs> Behold. Okay, go ahead. Come. All they gather themselves together. Mm -hmm. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come to slot. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. That's right. Okay. So get um uh second Ezra chapter 13. Come. Um should be going to where the multitude is. So, um, verse 28. Hold on. Oh, so lock it. Yeah. Uh, verse, uh, mm -mm. verse 12. Come on, this is 2nd Ezra mm -hmm. 13 and verse 12. Afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and called unto him another peaceable multitude. Another peaceable multitude. Go ahead. And there came much people unto him. Mm -hmm. Wherefore shall Because they were attracted to what? That light. That light that Yahweh Shai had, man. Come on. Coming from who? Yahweh. That's why when he was, he had his ministry on earth, what happened? What did he do? When you read uh, uh, John, I think the 17th chapter, he gave all glory. Matter of fact, I'll get it real quick. Come on. All right. Just to get some edification on it. This is a... Um, John 17 and 4, it says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. He was speaking to the, his father. That's how you know they're separate entities. Okay? But he glorified him. Therefore, Yahweh gave him light. All right? So go ahead. Come And there came... So uh, Yeah. And there came much people unto him, wherefore some were glad, mm -hmm. some were sorry, mm -hmm. some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Mm -hmm. There you go. But that's that. That's those are those Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay. But even so, the confusions of faces come to Yahweh Shai. It's a peaceful multitude. Mm -hmm. Go to Revelation chapter 7 come. real quick so we can get more edification on that multitude and start at verse 9. Come. This is Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. After this, I beheld in lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. Now, I said kindreds. Okay, that's the one I want to focus on. In the Greek, 
It's a, a Fula. Let's see what, it, what Esau says. Strong's G, 5443. Fule. 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 All right, which means a tribe. A tribe. So what? Let's keep reading. In the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. Hmm. So we understand in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, that the kindreds and the people and the tongues and all that and the nations is speaking about the 12 tribes. Come. But they just look like other nations. Mm -hmm. They look like a Moabite. Confusion of faces. There you go, bro. It's a confusion of faces, a multitude of people coming. But it's from the patriarch Jacob, which therefore they would be of the 12 tribes, but they just look a certain way. So even going back to Isaiah chapter 60, your light is going to attract. And even now, you even see it now in some of the camps, even in the, uh, the primarily, I think the Memphis camp, they have a brother named uh, Za'ab in there. He looks like a soul gone white guy. Or Edomite, but he's an Israelite. Mm -hmm. He's a full blood Israelite. Come. Straight like that. Because he gets it. The Lord opened his mental faculties and his pineal gland, which contains his spirit, to understand what the scriptures are saying. Therefore, he's an Israelite. Because only Israelites can get this. Mm -hmm. Okay? No other nation. Because this wasn't given to no other nation. It was given to the Israelites to understand. The men of the Lord are Israelites. Okay? So even the peaceful multitude will be what? Israelites. Israelites. No matter what they look like. Get um, James 1 and 1. Okay. Come. Come. No worries. It's all good, man, because because these Christians try to come up to us and speak about how every everybody's going to be saved because it says nations, he says this, but they don't go into the words to really see what is is trying to portray and what it's actually talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they don't understand the fact that Israel was separated and it was dispersed among all nations. All right. Okay, so go ahead, bro. This is James one and verse one, mm -hmm. James. A servant of the Most High and of the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach mm -hmm. to the twelve tribes mm -hmm. which were scattered abroad. Greetings. To the twelve tribes that were scattered abroad. Greetings. Now you can drop James. Uh -huh. All right. Hold Revelation 7. Come on. Get, uh, let me see your apocrypha. I'm going to get a scripture in the book of Baruch. Okay. Come on. Because we're, we're just going to put everything together. Okay. And if I can say, yeah, um, and that really cuts you too, Esau, mm -hmm. trying to push that um, that black Hebrew Israelite thing on us, man. Mm -hmm. That really cuts you. What about the confusion of faces? What about um, the brother Zaab, you know, that looks like a so-called white man, but through the blood and spirit of Yahweh Shemim he's an Israelite, you That's know. Right. And there's going to be more people like Zaab. You're going, you might be going to see more bites, you know, Ishmaelites, whoever, you know, so-called man. Confusion of faces coming to this thing. Mm -hmm. That's really going to be an uh, Israelite. That's right. And that's going to be calling on the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha. And that's going to be on the highways and byways pushing that name too. That's right. You know, and, re and rebuking his people and cussing out you devils, man. You so know? How, he's like, how do you explain that? That's how you know he's going to have to come up with false allegations on us. Okay. Okay. But since we're on uh, speaking about the, the confusions of faces... This is the Baruch chapter 1, verse 15. It says, And ye shall say, I'll start at 14. I'll start at 13. It says, uh, Pray for us also un unto the Lord our power, for we have sinned against the Lord our power. And unto this day, the fury of the Lord and his wrath is, is not turned from us. That's right. That's why you see the hell we're catching, but it's slowly being lifted up off of us and put it on the other nations. God. Verse 14, and ye, I want to say slowly, it's quickly happening. Because this, we can see this place going down quicker and quicker by the day. All Come right? 
John, yeah. What you gonna say something? I was just, I was just about to say, um, like earlier today, we seen an Edomite run on a bike and fell into the fire. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like an, like an idiot, man. But it was, it was a quick action, too. Man. Just falling, man. You know, this yeah. place is falling. <laughs> and even so, this morning, I always check the Dow Jones, even though the Dow Jones is highly manipulated and, and, and trillions of dollars are pumped into it. But even so, from the span of September to this month, the Dow Jones has gone down 2,000 points. 2,000 points. Today, it was down 400 points. Just the other day, it was down 800 points. So this is the, the economic system and, 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 and the, the social and geopolitical system of America and this, this entire society is, is going down quickly, okay? It says uh, in verse 14, Baruch 1 and 14, and ye shall read this book which we have sent unto you. See, meaning what? He's writing this book to a particular certain people, okay? It was sent to you, man, all right? To make confession in the house of the Lord upon the feast and the solemn days, okay? Verse 15, the point. And ye shall say, to the Lord our power belongeth righteousness. That's right. To Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai belong righteousness. Because he's omnipotent and perfect. Okay? But unto us, the confusions of faces. But unto us, the confusions of faces, man. We're still dealing with this carnal flesh. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll be like, man, fucking heathen. And then end up talking to him and be like, you have to repent later because it was a jake. But we don't know until we see it. That's why the scriptures back us up on that in um, in, in Romans the eight, uh, this, the second chapter, which says um, you're not a Jew outwardly but inwardly. Okay, it says um, but unto us confusions of faces, as it has come to pass this day unto the unto them of Judah, okay, and the inhabitants. Into the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So we got to confuse us and faces, man. So these Gentiles are coming up, this peaceful multitude spoken about in 2 Ezra 13 and Revelation 7. They're Israelites, especially going into the word kindred. It's right there. Um, it's right there in the it clear as day. In the New Testament, all the all the persons descending from one of the twelve sons of the patriarch Jacob. A tribe, a nation, and people. Mm. That's what Revelation 7 is talking about. Not everybody can be saved. No, it's a particular people. They just look a certain way. Because mm -hmm. belong what belongs to us? Confusions of faces. Yeah. Okay? So I reread Isaiah. We go by Isaiah 60 and 3 real quick. Okay, come on. Okay? Yeah. So we can understand what it means. Come on. Okay? This is what our light is going to attract. Yes, our light attracts, you know, like us two brothers, for example. We just we look like Israelites, okay? We look like Israelites, but even some people would, would mistake us as being Judites or something. Mm -hmm. We're both Gad. We don't totally look like a native, a so-called Native American, mm -hmm. but we are. We're Gadites through the spirit, what we believe. You know what I'm saying? We just don't look like a typical guy. All right? If that, us right here is, is an example of confusions of faces. Yeah. All right, so go ahead. Can I, uh, I'm going to continue on in verse 5. Read verse uh, Isaiah 60 and 3. Come, this is Isaiah mm -hmm. 60 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, mm -hmm. and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So Gentiles, man, the Israelites, all right? So go ahead. Come on, verse 4. Look up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy, thy um, sons shall come from far mm -hmm. and thy daughters shall be uh, nursed or nursed mm -hmm. at thy side. And go to five. Verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And then thou shalt see shall see that flow together, we read what? Uh, Michael 4 and 1, that shall flow into it. So go ahead. Come, and thine heart shall shall fear. And thine heart shall fear. Go ahead. And be enlarged. And be enlarged. Thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because when you fear the Lord, there comes your wisdom. Therefore you grow. So go ahead. 
Hold on, let's Come. see if we can get the word enlarged. That word uh, enlarged is a uh, rahab, okay, which means to grow wide, be or grow large, to be wide and enlarged, broad or roomy pasture, make large and large. Uh, Strong's definition to be broadened, all right, to make room, to make wide, open, large, or larging, okay? So let's go back. So go ahead, brother. John, I'm going to continue. It says, because the abundance of the sea shall be uh, converted. Converted. Con converted, go ahead. Unto thee. That's right. So it says, thou shalt see. You're going to, again, behold, you're going to see because of what? The Spirit of the Lord has come upon you. All right? The glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. You shall see the flow together. Thy heart shall fear. And you will be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Mm -hmm. Now we understand. Let's get, let's get the word converted. Let's do one thing at a time. Okay? Here's the word converted. And the word converted is a... Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, hapak, okay, which means to turn, overthrow, overturn, all right, to turn applies to this, all right, it says to turn, again applies, turn about, that applies, mm -hmm. turn around, that applies, to change and transform, these things, to be changed, all right, because you got to use context when you read these definitions, Esau's wicked as We'll put 15 million different yeah, things, but you got to pick the bones yeah. out. Okay? It says to transform oneself. Okay? So it says what? In the abundance of the sea shall be converted or change themselves unto mm -hmm. you or turn or turn around to you. Okay? So the word sea would mean the people that are attracted to that light shall be converted to turn to you. That's why you read in what? Acts, in the book of Acts, 3,000 were, were uh, converted or believed. Three, uh, 5,000 believed. 1,000 believed. What? Because what? The abundance of the sea shall be converted to thee. That's what the apostles saw at that time, and that's what we're going to see coming soon. Very soon, man. We see it in a small scale, but we're going to see it Come to pass in a big number. Come. Okay, go ahead, bro. Come, I'm gonna continue. It says, uh, "Converted unto thee, the forces of the uh, Gentiles shall come unto thee, unto thee." That's what? right. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So, forces is another another word for abundance. You could say. Mm -hmm. So here's the word forces, which is um, which is uh, uh, Chayal, which means strength. Okay, yeah, that's Chayal, because how you say Ezekiel is Yechazakwala, all right, which means, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Yahweh's strength. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is uh, Chayal, uh, all right, which means strength or might. Might or mighty is Atazawam in the Hebrew. Efficiency, wealth, army. An army is an abundant amount of people. To have an army, if you if you have an army, you have a lot of people. If you got two people, you really ain't got a goddamn army. Unless you got the spirit of the Lord with you. <laughs> Con, yeah. All right, that's a different story. Okay, then you definitely got an army. Shoot, you got an army with one person if you got the spirit of the Lord with you. Go to force. Okay? So the force, the forces are the armies of the Gentiles shall come into thee. What? That peaceable multitude. Mm -hmm. That innumerable people that couldn't be numbered. Come into Yahweh Shai in, in, in uh, second, uh, Ezra's the 13th chapter, as long, along with Revelation, the 7th chapter. Yeah. All right? She'll come unto you because of what? You had that right. That right. The spirit. You know? God. You had the spirit. Did you have anything that's wrong? You had the Oh, wow. Your time as well. Time. You know? So we just wanted to go through Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5 with y'all, you know, brothers. You know, Lord William was edifying. You know, but if you want to keep that light, you got to stay in the stead and keep walking the path that your house always walking. Okay, like uh, matter of fact, we can end on First uh, Corinthians eleven. Yeah.
First Corinthians eleven and one. Mm -hmm. You can break it down. Bro. God. This is First Corinthians eleven and verse one. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Yahweh Hamashiach. Plain and simple, you know. Be followers of Yahweh Hamashiach. Continue to walk as Yahweh Hamashiach to the best of your ability. In this dark place, man, keep shining that light, so we can go ahead and um, get the hopeful elect, you know. And that's all. And that, and if you keep following your heart shot, that's how you get your light. Yeah, kind of. Okay, and that's how the people are going to be attracted to you. Man. So again, you know, this is Brother Kasha Paulo. And the Brother Sakari. From the GMS Atlanta Church here in Georgia. Giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rekakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, great millstone who do well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect, 144 first fruit. All right. No willing again. This lesson was edifying. Until next time, we want to say Shalom. Shalom.